Well, greetings and welcome back to today's edition of Extraordinary Connection. My name is Devin Smith and I serve as the pastor here at Romeo United Methodist Church and it is my pleasure to be able to spend the next few minutes with you as we continue to offer these daily devotions as a way for people to spend a few minutes in the Word of God. And as I mentioned, I'm serving as the pastor currently and it was actually just about well, a little over a year ago now that I was ordained as an elder in full connection here in the United Methodist Church in the Michigan Area Conference. And through that process in my ordination, I've had people ask me before what that means or what my job even entails. So I went and pulled this from umc.org. It's actually from our Book of Discipline. It's paragraph 340, Responsibilities and Duties of Elders and Licensed Pastors. The responsibility of elders are derived from the authority given in ordination. Elders have a foretold ministry of word, sacrament, order, and service, and thus serve in the local church and in extension ministries in witness and service of Christ's love and justice. Elders are authorized to preach and teach the word, to provide pastoral care and counsel, to administer the sacraments, and to order the life of the church for service in mission and ministry as pastors, superintendents, and bishops. Those are the orders that we're given. And they do take on different shapes and sizes and the things that are included with them in every appointment. They all look different. Each, each appointment has its own things. But I also feel like there should be one more line just added to the end. One simple little line, something included in those orders, that something in effect that reads and other items as necessary. Because for as long as I've been around the church and now serving in the church, I have seen all those things that a pastor may end up doing in the course of their day or week. I know that in my five years, I have become a master table and chair setter upper and taker downer. I've been able to practice my plumbing skills more times than I would ever care to admit, actually. I've also been able to practice my electrician skills with only a few minor shocks every here and there. I've been on fridge cleanout duty, lawn care and snow removal, and I'm sure if I continue to think back over these past five years, I would find a few other things to add to that list, things that aren't necessarily under those normal expectations on the job description. But it was just this week, it was just actually today that I was able to add an entirely new item to that other items as necessary list. Today, I added to that list bat removal. And yes, you heard that right, bat removal. It was actually rather ironic because I was sitting right here in my desk listening to Pastor Dylan's devotional about his process for writing a devotion. And I was reflecting on it, thinking about it a little bit, thinking about what I was gonna do for today when suddenly, above my head, there was something flying, continually doing loops around the room. And I was actually able to capture a, a short video. Let me show you here. You know, I never did go and check, but I'm sure that if I looked at the, the heart rate tracking that my watch does, maybe you have a watch that does something similarly, if I went and checked, there would be a significant spike right around noon today because that is when I saw my flying friend circling the room. And I'm happy to report that I was able to make use of a, a net and bucket that I located among the props and costumes in the children's room, that I was able to get that little flying flying thing into a bucket, but in doing so, I did not make it any too happy. Now, I don't speak bat. I'm not fluent in bat. But I'm pretty sure it was really letting me have it there. It was none too happy with where it found itself at that moment. But as I said, I'm happy to report that all's well that ends well. And I was glad to be able to release it back outside. And I was only able to grab this 
One quick picture as it flew off into the trees across the street, you see it going there. But once I sat back down at my desk and my heart rate returned to a somewhat normal level, I was able to reflect for a moment. And I realized that while it was not exactly the most pleasant experience for me dealing with that bat, it was certainly just as unpleasant for the bat. It had found itself stuck in a place that it didn't want to be. It found itself stuck in a place where others didn't want it to be either. And as I thought about that, I wondered, have you ever been in a place where you didn't want to be? Maybe even stuck there by circumstances outside of your control. Maybe you were treated poorly by others. Maybe you suffered in that place. Maybe you even faced persecution simply because of who you were in that place. I found myself in the pages of 2 Timothy as I thought about this, and I wanted to share them with you. It's found in chapter 3, verses 10 to 15. Now you have observed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and my suffering, the things that happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, what persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Indeed, all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But wicked people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, Continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you have learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Paul shares with us a very real and very eye-opening truth in his letter. At some point, all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, will be persecuted. There will be struggles. There will be sufferings. It will not always be easy. At times, we may find ourselves in our own Antioch, Iconium, or Lystras. We may find ourselves in that place where we are not wanted, where we are not welcome. But Paul wanted to remind Timothy, Paul wanted to remind us still today, that how we respond is what matters. Wicked people and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But he implores those who have faith to continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing who you have learned it from. Even as we find ourselves in those times and places that we aren't welcomed, those places that perhaps we don't want to be, we are still called to remember, called to live as people of grace and love. My hope for all of us is as we find ourselves in those uncomfortable, unknown, maybe even unwelcoming places, that we can remember who we are, and whose we are, that we can extend grace and love to those we meet and encounter, even those that we don't agree with, those that don't welcome us. That through our actions, through our words, we can show a better way of living, a way of love, a way that has been shown to us. Take care, my friends. Stay safe. Stay well. Until next time, I'll just be hanging around here at Extraordinary Connection. God bless.